Starting tomatoes from seed is an easy and cost-effective way to grow your own juicy and flavorful tomatoes at home. Whether you're an experienced gardener or just a beginner, growing your own food allows you to have control over what you eat and how it is grown. To start tomato plants from seed, you will need a few basic supplies. These include a seed tray, seed starting mix, and tomato seeds. Start by filling the seed tray with the starting mix that is very damp but not wringing wet and planting the seeds about a quarter of an inch deep. Make sure to keep the soil moist and warm, ideally between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. After I get these seeds planted, I will cover them with plastic wrap to keep the humidity level constant. You could also use a humidity dome to accomplish the same thing. Once I am finished planting this tray, I'll put them onto a heat mat in the house to keep them at the ideal temperature for the seeds to germinate. A heat mat isn't necessary to start the seeds, but it may cut the germination time by one to three days. Once the seedlings have grown their first true leaves, I will plant them into larger containers with potting soil and bring them back out to the greenhouse so they can get plenty of light. By the way, welcome to the old Mayfield place. If you're planting different varieties of tomatoes in one seed flat, you will need to label the cells so you know what each plant is. I like to use masking tape on the side of the seed flat. You can also use plant markers or popsicle sticks, but they may interfere with the plastic wrap. Also keep a journal of which variety germinated the quickest, was the healthiest and most productive, and had the best flavor. This way you will know which variety you want to plant again in the future. Once you have about 50% of the cells sprouting, you need to take the plastic wrap or humidity dome off the tray and the tray off the heat mat and get it into the light. While the heat is great for seeds, it isn't great for seedlings. If the roots get too warm, they will try to escape from the heat and they become leggy. Leggy plants are not strong plants and they are more likely to die. And unless you have a large south facing window that gets 10 to 14 hours of direct sun, you will want to use grow light on your seedlings. Put the seedlings about two to three inches below the light so they can grow strong. If they have to search for the sun, they can become leggy, which we've already said isn't good. As the plants grow, you will have to raise the light so they aren't touching it. Keep your soil moist, but not wet. If the soil dries out, your plants will die. If the soil is too wet, you may get root rot and your plants will die. Seedlings are like Goldilocks. They like things to be just right. If you have seed cells that fit into trays to catch water, you may want to bottom water the plants by putting about a half an inch of water into the bottom tray. Let your cell tray set in it for about 30 minutes. Then dump the water from the bottom tray so that the soil doesn't get too wet. You will probably have to do this once a day to keep the moisture level correct. Keep the seedlings under the grow light for 10 to 14 hours every day, but not for 24 hours. Seedlings need their beauty rest. Once the seedlings develop their second set of true leaves, you will want to transplant them into a larger pot so they can grow. This is especially important if you are using small cell starting trays. You don't want your seedlings to become root bound, which can stunt their growth. At the same time, you may want to start fertilizing your young plants. Choose a water soluble fertilizer that can be dissolved in water before application. You do not want to use full strength fertilizer on your seedlings as it may burn the delicate roots. Start with a quarter strength mixture to bottom water the plants about every two weeks. As the plants get larger, about three to four inches tall with multiple sets of true leaves, you will want to increase to half strength fertilizer, but feed them only every three weeks. You should wait to put your tomatoes into the ground until there is no chance of frost in your area. To find your last frost date, you can go to almanac.com. Remember, this date is not set in stone, but is based on the average frost dates in your area over the last few years. We've had snow in May before, even though my last average frost date is April the 12th. So I won't be putting my plants into the ground until the week after Mother's Day. But just in case a freak frost happens, you may want to save a few tomato plants inside as a backup plan. While some varieties of vegetables are frost hardy, such as lettuce, cabbage, and broccoli, tomatoes are not, and I do not want to risk my plants by jumping the gun and putting them out too soon. If something does happen and you lose all of your precious tomato plants, you can pick some up at your local nursery. A year without homegrown tomatoes is unthinkable. While there are multiple varieties of tomatoes, there are two types of tomato plants, determinate and indeterminate. Determinate tomato plants, also known as bush tomatoes, grow to a certain height, usually three to four feet tall, and then they stop growing. They produce a crop of tomatoes over a relatively short period of time typically within a two to three week period. 
All of the fruit will be ready to harvest at about the same time, which means you will be busy dealing with your harvest when the tomatoes are ready, but then you'll be done. After the fruit has been harvested, the plant will stop producing new growth and slowly decline. So now you can remove these plants and use the area to plant another vegetable, increasing your food production for the year. You can get determinate tomato varieties that will produce slicing tomatoes, sauce tomatoes, and cherry tomatoes. This type of tomato plant is ideal for gardeners with limited space. Some determinate tomatoes are micro dwarfs and will only grow to be 12 to 24 inches tall. These plants are great for gardeners living in apartments and growing on a balcony or even indoors under a grow light. Indeterminate tomato plants, also known as vine tomatoes, continue to grow and produce fruit throughout the growing season until they are killed by frost or disease. They can grow to be quite tall, sometimes up to 10 feet or more, and require support such as stakes or trellises to keep them upright. Or if you have the space, you can allow them to grow along the ground. Most of the tomatoes I'm planting this year are indeterminate, and I will be training them to grow on these cattle panels. Indeterminate tomato plants produce fruit over a longer period of time than determinate plants, typically from midsummer until the first frost of the season. So you will be processing tomatoes for a longer period of time, but will typically have less to process in one session. When purchasing seeds, the package should tell you if the plant is determinate or indeterminate. I have found some packets don't use that specific wording, but will say bush or vining or possibly spreading plants. If you are thinking about growing tomatoes, you already know how delicious they are. But did you know that tomatoes are high in lycopene, an antioxidant that can help protect your eyes from cataracts and macular degeneration? Lycopene may also help strengthen your bones, decrease your risk of breast cancer, and protect you from sunburn. Tomatoes are also a good source of vitamin C, folate, and potassium. They are low in sugar and in calories, making them a great food if you're trying to lose weight. Thank you for stopping by the old Mayfield place today. Stay healthy, get those tomato plants planted, and have a blessed week.